Hello everyone, welcome. In this video, I'm gonna break down how I got these underwater shots. Right, so the montage of shots you just saw there are from a music video that I shot with a band called Shutdown Shipyard. And when I sat down with them originally, we had planned on doing that whole underwater sequence in a pool. Our plan was to use the fish tank method of dipping a fish tank down into a pool. You lower the camera down into the fish tank and then you're shooting through the glass to be able to get underwater shots. Um, so that was our plan but plans change. We couldn't find a pool. So instead of being a quitter, be a solution finder, a problem solver. Let's get into how I pulled off those underwater shots without a pool. It's honestly pretty simple. The solution to our problem was a fish tank, a very large fish tank. From the BTS footage, you can see that I was able to set this up uh, in my home office. So you can pull it off in, in most places. It has more of a, a DIY feel to it, especially with some of the limitations I'll talk about later on. But there are just a few things you need to do to make it look uh, more believable. And the main thing is having a black backdrop uh, behind your fish tank. It looks like this water is going into infinity behind them, just like an ocean would look. Um, when you sink down into the ocean, if you put some goggles on and just look out, it looks like it goes on forever. So you need to pull off that infinity effect. And then the second thing you'll need to do is have some sort of edge light or key light that's uh, wrapping uh, around your subject. For this, you can see I used the 300D with the spotlight mount attachment. And I actually went a little hard with the light. Like, it's not natural. You wouldn't get that much light um, coming through. I mean, maybe if the sun was hitting just right, you could get some pretty hard beams into some water. Um, but again, this is a music video, very stylized. I didn't really care. I wasn't going for realism. I was just going for something that looked cool and had a, an edgy feel to it. So I just blasted the 300D. Uh, through the back side of the tank. If you front light the tank, you'll reveal some of the illusion that you're trying to pull off. Um, you might get some glares in the front piece of glass. Um, you'll expose some of the bubbles that will gather or smears that have gathered on the glass. The third thing I did to try to make it feel more real, like this could be in water, was to get some movement uh, of the water. So I got one of these. It's pretty dusty because it's just been sitting in the fish tank now for the last uh, year, but I got one of these fish bubblers. So you just turn it on and stick this down into the uh, water and place it where you need it in the shot and it'll get some, some bubbles coming up. I kind of experimented with the kind of bubbles you're getting with this little piece and then taking it off. So just play with it and see what works best. One of the other things I did with the bubbler was I got some shots of just the water with the bubbles moving up. And then I would take that and overlay it on top of some of the other shots and just turn the opacity down. So you have some bubbles uh, passing in front and in the beginning of the music video. I used a stock footage clip and I was able to overlay some of those bubbles to serve as some sort of transition between the stock footage and the um, underwater footage that I shot. And then I'll just get into some of the things you need to be aware of before you do this. The size of fish tank that you get will really determine what you're able to, to pull off with it. 
Uh, I was at Petco and got one of the largest size fish tanks I could get. I don't remember how many gallons it is, but I got one that was large enough to where he could at least stick his arm in and then dip his head into it. So it's better than just sticking a hand in. And then he was actually able to get his head and shoulders down into it. If it was smaller, you wouldn't be able to do nearly as much with the underwater body stuff that we were trying to do. Be aware of what you're trying to shoot underwater because that will determine the size of fish tank that you need. And one of the main limitations you'll have with using a fish tank is you just can't get a lot of different shot angles. I mean, really only the front panel is large enough to shoot through. Uh, if you try to go from the side, you're gonna get the corners of the fish tank. Really, you're limited to the front panel. And then even within that, you can't move your camera around a whole lot or you'll show the top and bottom of the fish tank. One of the other things to be aware of is that as you let the fish tank sit there, bubbles will start to gather on the wall. And if you're shooting with those bubbles on the wall, it will very quickly reveal to your audience that, the, that you're using a fish tank because uh, you'll have these things moving in the background behind the bubbles. The bubbles are static and it will reveal that that's just a wall um, that's sitting in front. So constantly be watching for bubbles and wipe them off. Another thing to be aware of, you'll probably make a huge mess. Water got everywhere when we were doing this, especially uh, it soaking onto his clothes and then coming out of the water, it would just start dripping everywhere. So make sure you have towels. I put down trash bags uh, to keep my carpet safe and then towels on top of the trash bags. And you also have to be aware of the water displacement. If someone's sticking their body into the water and you didn't calculate enough room for the displacement of the water rising up once they stick their body into it, you're just gonna have it spilling over the sides everywhere. Be prepared for this to take some time. I did not realize how heavy water was. So once you fill up a large fish tank, you can't move it. You will have to take buckets out. Just scoop a bucket out, go dump it. Scoop a bucket out, go dump it. I don't have a water pump, and I also didn't have a hose that I could bring inside. I had to do it by hand, bucket by bucket by bucket, and it took a very long time. And then emptying, it took a long time too. Make sure you have it where you're going to shoot once you start filling it up because you will not be able to move it, especially not be able to move it without spilling anything. Yeah, that's it for this video. Hope it was helpful. See you in the next one.